a beautiful Tuesday morning to you out there. This is you know your 100 to 7 FM, and you're on to newspaper review on your number one campus radio. Newspaper review is a news and current affairs program that comes up every weekday, Monday to Friday at 30 to 9 a.m. I am Jimmy Jackson, welcoming you to the show. Today, I'm not going to be doing this alone. I have uh, an analyst joining us on the program this morning, talking about Izzy Fields. Good morning, Izzy Fields, and welcome to Newspaper Review. Good morning, Mr. Jimmy. Good morning, Aquabomite. Good morning, Uyo. I would say it's quite really nice to be part of the show today, being the first day in the month of uh. December, and it's good to be back. Uh, Mr. Jimmy, you are looking so uh, <laughs> handsome this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Izzy Fields. Uh, well, you can be part of the program by calling the studio line 0701 07 or 0818836262. Better still head straight to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash UFM, like our page and actually drop your comment. So there's actually a post um, that actually would be talking about the headlines that we'll be talking about today on the program. Okay. Yes, you can also watch watch us live, uh, watch Jimmy Jackson live as it feels right in the studio. Hit me up on social media, facebook.com Jimmy Jackson. And you will to see us live right here in the studios. Okay, starting off this morning, yes, we're going to start from um, the local scene, but truly really a sad, a sad incident, if you ask me. As um, yes, this story for me is quite disheartening. I, I don't know how to phantom it, but is a a quite bomb woman kills mother this um, member buddy. Quite sad. This, this, uh, this is a really sad story right there. Uh, when I saw this story, I was wondering what really went wrong. So I believe one thing we could have said here, I think the woman needs to be subject to a test. To what type of test are you looking at? Uh, we need to test her mentally to know mm. that she's mentally stable. Okay. Because someone with his right sanity wouldn't do that mm. to his own mother. So I think one thing the government need to do here is to subject a woman to sanity test and if they discover that she's mentally stable, mm. then that's when they can make her to face the full wrath of the law. But it's quite a sad one for the family. Mm, quite a sad one. And uh, one would ask uh, what would have made uh, uh, somebody want to kill the mom? Uh, that's why I, I said uh, the woman needs to be subject to sanity tests. Okay. Because someone in his right senses, Jimmy, just look at it. This is your mom. Uh. No matter what you're facing, okay. nothing warrants that. So the woman needs to be subject to that. When they discover that, okay, this is what caused, and they need to put her into questioning. What might have caused you to do this? Mm. What provoked you to this? Mm. Because there is nothing you go through in life. People are going through a lot of stuff. And we can't say, because of you going through this, you now go to do some vices in the society. And these vices you are perpetrating is against your own blood. Okay. So the best the government could do, get her to run a sanity test on her. Then if they discover that she is stable mentally, mm. then she should first the wrath of the law. Okay, zero seven zero one zero seven zero one zero zero seven or zero eight one eight three six two six two is the number you can join the conversation this morning. This is New Super Review on your number one campus radio. You know your one hundred dot seven FM. Still talking about security and crime. Bono killings at rage as our presidency says slain farmers never got military clearance. Is it feels these statements was credited to? the senior special assistant to the president on media gaba show what would i have to say about this definitely i expected the presidency to come out and defend yourself mm. and one way of doing it is them blaming the debt okay i think one thing they should i would the question i want to raise here is where these farmers are uh, given the orientation they are supposed to get the clearance before going into this area that's the question they need to come and tell us mm. We know that the most of those parts are warring prone areas right now, although the Boko Haram said has been defeated according to our security chiefs. Mm. But the farmers, to go back to their places, they still need clearance from the army. I think it's a good one. But the question is, the media officer of this security uh, uh, outfit, how are they going about informing these farmers that they need to come get clearance? And if you get to most of these areas, how many of them are literate enough to know that they are supposed to come get the clearance. So they need to step down.
to this farmer's level, get them to be orientated that they need to come get the clearance. Okay, those that have died have died. How about those that are living? How many of them have been informed that they need to come get clearance before they go back to their where they get their source of living? Okay. Which is farming. All right, then, as if you're still staying with this, don't you see these as a potential, you know, threat to food security in this country? Definitely. It's a threat to food security. Uh. Some times back, we had sh shortage in onions. Okay. And onions normally comes from that part. Okay. So these are some of the questions we need to raise. How many of these farmers are aware? This is where these people live from. This is where they get their livelihood. Uh. So if you want them to get clearance before getting back to the farm, okay, what are the plans by the federal government being put in place that if you can't farm in your farm, the one you had because of the warring of the Book Haram set, uh -huh. you were displaced, uh -huh. what are the parameters being put by the federal government to substitute for that? Okay. 0701 or 0818 is the number you can join in the conversation this morning. This is News Paper Review on your number one campus with radio. Jimmy Jackson is in fields right here in the house. We're talking security this morning as um, we saw um, gruesome killings right there in the northeast, yeah, in Bono State at the weekend and it's actually been a talking point but before we move away from that particular story is the fields governor senators psc others seek a rejig of security architecture it's the fields we have talked about security and have the calls for you know the head of security apparatus in the country to you know either step aside or be removed and now with these everybody calling for the rejig of the security architecture. What do you think the federal government should do at this point? Because it's not like everybody has come out to say the same thing, but the federal government is still insisting that the security agencies are doing their jobs. Jimmy, if you look at this particular headline, it keeps recurring. Mm. Every time we have uh, newspaper headlines in our country, mm. security is one of the paramount things that the mass is required from a government. Okay. But we keep finding most of the security chiefs wanting. If you can still remember, there were a time back then that the security chiefs were being called to be sacked. So now, if you look at, we are getting into the festive period. Uh. We just uh, had a protest uh. against a security outfit. Okay. So the big question is, what is the government doing? Going back to the drawing board and bringing out uh, a new architecture for this security outfit and... Who are those that are being put in place to man this security outfit? If they are found wanting, they should be fired. We are talking of security here. These are lives. And there are no two ways about this thing. If you can't provide security for the citizens, if you look at the case of the farmers being killed there and the security chiefs coming out to defend themselves that the, the masses didn't get clearance, it's quite sad. Mm. It's very sad. And I would say, Jimmy... We need to go back to the drawing board. Okay. Just like the secure, the many people are advocating right there. Mm. We need to go back to the drawing board. After restrategizing and getting a good architecture, we also need to look at who are the manpower that will man these strategies that have been adopted. Okay. 0701 or 0818 Yes, this is the number you can join the conversation this morning. Yes, Alright, you can eat us up on the uh, studio line 0701 0701 or 0818236262 or better still head straight to our Facebook page, like a page, drop your a comment okay yes while we're still talking um security one of our analysts walked in into the studio talking about felicia mark anthony uh well i think i'll just allow her take a breather and uh i'll actually get her hope you know to join in the conversation this morning All right, this is still Newspaper Review on your number one campus radio. Moving away from the security this morning, 
Uh, I don't know if uh, Felicia would have uh, something to say with uh, security as um, the governors, Nigerian governors, senators, and then police uh, service commission, others seek for rejig of uh, security architecture in the country. Felicia, welcome to News Report Review today. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry for coming late. All right, okay. So security, security, uh, what do we have to say briefly? We've been talking about this since yesterday, hmm. and it's it's quite sad that each time this, this type of thing happens, the presidency is always expressing shock. I don't know when, <laughs> they're always expressing shock. Okay. These things keep happening, and each time it happens, we're always seeing the presidency is shocked. Hmm. Yeah. We should actually stop being shocked and start working towards stopping the shock. So are you of the opinion that uh, security architecture in Nigeria should be rejig? Yes, I am. Okay, zero seven zero one zero seven zero one zero zero seven is the number you can join the conversation this morning. Let's uh, head straight to education and uh, the crisis in the University of Ibadan. It has been lingering for some time now, but yesterday we saw drama. I don't know if uh, my analysts would see it as a drama, but again, uh, Sanu's um, Nasu members sweep um, Olayin Ka out of office. Ikanola is UI acting vice chancellor. Is it, um, is it feels <laughs> University of Ibadan? I don't know. I think it, that's one of the universities in Nigeria talking about the transition of um, vice chancellor in all federal tertiary institution that has been in the news for quite some time now. And finally, they have a new acting vice chancellor. What would you have to say about this particular one? I would say and uh, what pertains for the, that particular university as uh, somebody stepping in as um, in acting capacity? Mr. Jim, I would say it was quite symbolic looking mm. at uh, the way the tenure of the outgoing uh, president ended mm. and the way he was sent forward. Okay. You know, using, looking at those, uh, the senior academic staff there, using broom to sweep <laughs> his feet. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I would say, I will use the word you just used. Yeah, it was quite a drama. Mm. But I think it symbolized something. Okay. So what, what does that symbolize? Uh, to me, I would say it was a way of uh, a kind of cleansing that they were doing, sweeping his feet. Okay, we are cleaning the system. But what, can we talk about the issues um, that is quite peculiar to the seat of vice chancellor in Nigerian universities? Uh, I would want you to is it a, break, a, break that down. Okay, okay. Is it leadership, um, you know, problem or is it administrative problem? I think it boils down from the top. I think it's an administrative problem here. Okay. So when you look at what transpired right there, mm. I think, would I say we're there to in the line of the federal government of the party that brought the, the incoming, the in-sitting president into power, you know, the party used a broom. So I would say, were they doing that? Like, you know, that broom symbolized a change. So this was a change <laughs> in leadership. Mm. So I would say maybe it's a way they were showing okay. that there was a change in, in administration in that university. Okay, uh, Felicia, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> Felicia, today, uh, still talking about uh, UI and um, the acting vice chancellor um, that has actually been um, sworn in yesterday is to stay for the next six months, pending when a substantive vice chancellor will be, um, yes. I don't know, yes, elected into that particular university. Uh, what can you say is the problem of leadership in Nigerian universities? Because Sanu is actually one of the bodies that would always, you know, want to say that uh, they are not happy with the current leadership of uh, the institution. Um, I think he said it's an administrative problem, but uh -huh. I actually feel it's an individualistic problem. Really? It has to do with the leader himself. Because who is the administrator? Who is the person dishing out the, the rules, the laws, the money? Uh -huh. It's the VC, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, Felicia, when you say the person that dish out the law, this law doesn't just come into play. You don't come in with uh, made laws from you. Okay. There are laws already, and you're the person to come in and help implement it. Uh -huh. that, you, 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 you help implement the law. Yeah. So these things will be broken down if you, as the VC, does not implement the law. If he says he will, then he will. Definitely, there are checks and balances when it comes to power. Okay. And in uh, a citadel of learning like this, where we have learned people, you can't just come and override on laws that are already been put in place. People will raise questions. Okay. All right. Zero seven zero one zero seven zero one zero zero seven or zero eight one eight three six two six three. The number you can join the conversation this uh, Jimmy, morning. Before you move to the next story, I want to 
draw out a particular line, a quotation okay. of what transpired here. All right. Uh, I quote, it says, Why we are here today is not to dissipate energy or make noise, but to appreciate God, Almighty God, for seeing us through this tenure of Professor Olainka. Wow. <laughs> look at that. Look at They're appreciating God. Mm. And now, look at the next line. Okay. We suffered untold hardship under the watch of Professor Olainka. Okay. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's like it's it's a celebration thing that this person is finally out. Like thank out. God. <laughs> but anyway, they, they say power is transcend. So, so oh, definitely, yeah. um, well, <laughs> that, that, that's happened. Okay. Zero seven zero one zero seven zero one zero zero seven or zero eight one eight and three six two six is the number you can join the conversation this morning. I'm still talking about the university. You know, University of Rio today uh, would be bidding farewell to the current vice chancellor. As of now, he's still the current vice chancellor of the university. Talking about Professor Nafio Kessien. I, I hope they don't use boom here. <laughs> no, <won't>. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, that's that's the words according to is it feels. <laughs> it's quite funny, but but that that is events. It will be taking place uh, today, and uh, that will be ushering in the new vice chancellor. Talking about Professor uh, Dao Daoyo. <laughs> Yeah, Udo, yes. Yeah, Udo. Yeah, uh, right here in the University of Uyo. Congratulations to uh, Professor. Congratulations, Prof. Congratulations, Prof. But, but uh, you, you made a statement. Uh, let's just hope that uh, we, we would not witness that. Okay. <laughs> well, we should be careful, right? Yeah. <laughs> 0701 or 0818 All right. Um, uh, quite a sad one still with the education sector. Yesterday, according to the pro chancellor of the University of Calabar, Unica lost 1.3 billion Nara property to looters hoodlums. As it feels, the entire protest brought on to hardship, brought um, tears to a lot of people, and especially institutions and plain individuals who are actually doing business. Now, looking at this 1.3 billion Nara lost to hoodlums, looters, how would the university cope? I think it's a really sad one right there. Uh. You know, I was uh, talking to one of the uh, security personnel yesterday who was based in Calabar during uh. the protest. Okay. And the guy was like, it was quite alarming, the properties that were destroyed during this protest. Uh. And the funny part is, people went around destroying government-owned property. So the question was, you are destroying government-owned property and... Indirectly, these properties are owned by the people. The individual that are in power will transcend a particular time and they will leave office. So all this, like the citadel of Lenin right there, is owned by the Calabar people, the cross Riverans. So if you destroy it, it will affect you. Uh. Because definitely, either your relative is in that school. Okay. And now look at the amount that this is claiming or... Uh, I won't use the word claiming. Okay. <laughs> I won't use that word. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, if you look at the amount, 1.3 trillion. Who is going to pay? That's the big question. Okay. Felicia, I hope it doesn't go down on the student. It will definitely bounce back on the student. Students. That is what they don't understand because at the end of the day, you will start seeing different levies like but, but the, it, um, COVID, COVID can, can we say? Can, can we say it to students that actually... Looted those properties. We can't say that. We can't say. So we why would why would students that, come and pay sure. for something they don't? That's the system. That's, that's the system. That's you can't run away from it. And when the students have been taxed, it boils, it boils down to their parents now, and they will start complaining exactly. that the government is hard on them. Okay, zero seven zero one zero seven zero one zero seven or zero eight one eight eight three six two six two. This is newspaper review on your number one campus radio. You know your one hundred dot seven FM. Better stay head straight to our Facebook, like your page, drop your comment, and uh, we'll be doing justice to all of your uh, comments right there on that Facebook. All right, let's talk some money uh, right here on this Super review this morning. Barrel market trades uh, at 500 naira to $1, a CBN at just exchange rates. Izzy, <laughs> let, let me come to you on this. Uh, I think yesterday uh, I saw a post from one of Nigerians, um, 
artist, a musical artist, um, talking about Davido, you know, he was complaining that um, he was shedding tears after changing dollar to Nigeria. <laughs> he was the one that even made me to understand that dollar apparel market is at 500 naira. But what does this pertain to the Nigerian um, naira? Because every day the naira keep depreciating. depreciating. So what's happening? I think it's quite a sad one right there, mostly for those that are running business that has to do with international yeah. market. Mm. It's really a sad one. And going to this festive period where everything is escalating, I think the federal government need to do something very drastic about this. Okay. Because if you look at the rate, uh, the exchange rate right there, even at the black market where the dollar is being sold, it's still on the high side. Mm. Naira is getting weaker and weaker every day. So I think the federal government need to go back to the drawing board, look for a way to revamp our economy so that the Naira can gain more strength. Okay. All right, Felicia, I'm still staying with the Naira, and uh, we're, since we were talking business this morning, uh, beneficiaries of the Aspire remittances to receive payment in dollar. Wait. <laughs> According to the CBN. And that that would be... It, it, it will be good. Okay. All right, uh, still... Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, in as much as that would be good, but the big question is how much will you be paying them? Exactly. Yes, that's that's something. How much will you be paying? If you say so, we'll be receiving in dollars, I, what's what's the amount we're talking about here? They should try to spell out this thing to us, so that tomorrow do they don't start giving us figures. Because there's this thing I saw on one of the reports yesterday. I wouldn't want to mention it. Mm. The amount was quite outrageous. Okay. So let them come out. You want to pay the people in diaspora? Tell us how much are you paying them. If you are paying them in dollars, tell us. Let the masses know how you are spending their funds. Okay. 0701070107 or 0818836262 is the number you can join the conversation this morning. Finally, on business this morning, federal government waves uh, 1.3 trillion import duty VAT. <sighs> Felicia Mark, 1.3 trillion. This would have helped Nigeria go a long way. But waving it, is it for a class kind of people? I don't know. But what do you have to say about this story? Like you said, it would have helped Nigeria go a long way. Waving it, I don't, I can't, I can't really comprehend. I don't know why. I don't know why they are taking such decisions. And we can't really tell the effects <laughs> it will have on us. So. Okay. All right, is there you have anything to say on this? Can you just say, uh, federal government just wave 1.3 trillion right there. Mm. Uh, what you just asked is a question. They need to come out and uh, spell it out for us. Is it for a certain class of people? Or is it for all the importers? If we, we, are, we are looking for ways to generate funds to, uh, to run the country, and you are waving some, we, we, we are making some money, how do you expect to run the country? Or do we still look for ways of going to get loans again? Okay. So the federal government should come out and tell us, who are you waving? Is it for all the importers? Then I could say it's a good one. Because if you look at it, we just talked about Naira compared to dollars okay. at the trade market. And Naira is weak. So then waving this could be good for those running this market out there. But the question is, the money you are waving, which other way do you intend to raise it? Yeah. Zero seven zero one zero seven zero one zero seven or zero eight one eight three three six two six two is the number you can join the conversation this morning. All right, uh, second to our last story this morning, NYC stream uh, two to resume calm December three. See it's PTF. It do twenty twenty shifted till early twenty twenty one. Felicia Mark NYC people going for service. But Nigerian universities are still short. <laughs> Nigerian universities are still short. Financial students are here to do their clearance. So who is actually going for the NYSC? Are you sure for, for Yes. Who are, who are doing clearance? Where? Are you sure? Where? I have friends. A lot of friends that they are here to do their clearance. Even here in University is, of is, Uyo, is their results compiled? Everything is ready. So you can come now. I think uh, non-teaching staff are actually... Not just in University of Uyo. We're not talking about University of Uyo. Okay. We're talking okay. about gen generally. Okay. In well, I know that the only thing that can keep you in school, uh, talking about clearance, uh, should be, um, I think, when you're not done with your exams or something, something like that. But 
I don't know, but I'm just asking. Because, Jimmy, I want to ask this question. Are private universities still closed? State universities are in section. They are in section. Yeah. So the NYC program is for all Nigerians, oh, okay. whether private. So it's only the public schools that okay, are okay. public universities okay. that are closed. Yeah. So so they need to do fasting or something. I don't know. So I can we so can we call ourselves <laughs> unlucky for being in, in public schools? Okay, you people don't have hope, right? Uh, we have hope. No, there is definitely hope. There's you hope. Didn't say that on the first day of December. We have hope. We have hope because we need to graduate. <laughs> All right, guys, um, this is this Super Review, and we are having so much fun right here in the studio. Yes, as it feels, Felicia Mark Anthony joining me today on the program. And uh, don't forget, tomorrow, um, I know we have promised this interview over and over again, uh, but we would have supposed to have had that interview today talking about the Sanu chairperson because he she needs to come tell us if truly you talked about Clarence. I think I have to include that. Yes, yeah, Clarence, yeah, so that people will know what's up and uh, the way forward for uh, you know the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, you know, University of Uyo chapter. So keep a date with us. Hopefully, tomorrow we'll be able to have that interview five um, 9.05 a.m. tomorrow, immediately after the news updates okay finally on this review this morning it's covid19 um updates where um yesterday nigeria recorded um, 145 new cases of covid19 still number 67,557. okay uh I, I know that we have to talk about this but in 30 seconds because you need to run off the studio <laughs> okay covid19 nigeria and ptf talking tough you know ptf allowed nyc you know um people to get back to camp and i think what was postponed was the national sport festival due to covid19 till next year which has affected a whole lot of stuff uh, what would you have to say about covid19 and nigerians taking these virus seriously because it seems like definitely uh, there's no covid19 to some people in nigeria uh, definitely there is COVID-19 I would say Nigeria okay. just have to keep following the preventive measures okay. just because the fatality rate is not on the high side doesn't mean that you should ignore uh, the NCDC uh, preventive measures being put out right. so Nigerians don't know that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nigerians don't know that I think that, that's one of the reasons we are here so okay. they need to know all right, that's where we have to call it a wrap today. Your newspaper review. I want to thank you, the Fields, Felicia Mark Anthony, for coming around on the program today. We'll be back tomorrow with another edition. Happy New Month, guys. And Happy New, have Happy new Month. A fun field December. <laughs> we uh, made it. Okay. We made it. Yeah, we made it. But again, I think uh, Christmas Village. So please, you should take me there. I just wish they could talk about this Christmas Village. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, it gets to the news. I think we are hearing one of the Big Brother um, uh, Superstar. Hey, Hi. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we just have to go. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow with another edition. Keep it with us. <laughs> have a fun few Tuesday. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, so what we use you?